Hey guys, Emily here. And Christy. And um, special guest Maggie Moo, as we call her, in the background. She's like staring like, what? I can't believe how grown she is. This is wild. I specifically Uh, put her further back so that when inevitably she decides she's interested in what's going on over here and she drags her sweet, chubby little body over here, at least it'll take her some time. (laughs) Savage. Okay. For those who don't know, Maggie is Christy's baby girl. We love her. And she is, you know, a pancreas pal, but like a pancreatically capable pal. So we, we love her all the same. Um, okay guys, it's been a hot minute. I keep recording things with Christy and not posting them. So I'm sure she's ready to murder me because her time is precious. Um, literally just what a year 2023 has been, but I'm back. I'm in it. We're in it. Um, literally a roller coaster of things. Everything's okay. Just, there's been no time to sit down and edit until now. It's been a full year. I, I don't think anyone I have spoken to, diabetic and not, has had a particularly slow, empty, like well-paced year. I feel like everyone's been go, go, going. It's also just been like such a stressful year. There's been like, you know, deaths in the family, um, you know, career stuff and just not all of it bad, but all of it time consuming um, and wild times. Lots of COVID, COVID abound. Matt had COVID recently, which is why I didn't have for the first time. Um, And I had it for the second time a couple months ago. And then for the first time in January, Maggie's being so cute. Um, Okay. But that's not what this episode is about. We actually have a topic that we're trying to discuss today and it was inspired by Christy. Um, So, you know, for those of us who have type one diabetes or type two, or are, you know, using any type of continuous glucose monitor, a pumping system, or multiple daily injections, which we will be referring to as MDI here, um, they are likely going to have some struggles with their skin and these winter months as we're turning into fall and winter here. Um, I don't know how we're supposed to focus when you have such a cute kid. I just keep leaning back to like tickle her toes. (laughs) Maggie's a silent participant. (laughs) Maggie also has needs some moisturized skin, you know, as all babies do. So this is the topic of discussion is all the things that can happen with diabetes in the in the colder months. So Christy, why don't you tell us a little bit about like what spurred this initial text to Miriam and I about um, winter winter woes with type one? Yeah. So your girl is on multiple daily injections, literally forever. Someone is going to have to pin me down and force a pump into my system. Um, I do very well with multiple daily injections. It's the system I've always been on. I love my CGM. That's been a great addition to my routine. We've like kind of talked that to death, but it fits in here only in the sense that I started noticing, um, like they literally looked like mosquito bites on my skin. I was having like these big kind of bruised welts and they started on the backs of my arms. Um, Absolutely no surprise as the weather started to turn chilly and my seasonal dry skin uh, returned. And there's just absolutely a correlation between where you're doing your shots, how often you're doing them in these areas. Are you hitting the same spots? Are you doing an injection where you recently, this is where uh, the big welt on my arm, I realized why was this particular one so bruised and painful? My dumb butt did not realize I went to do an injection in my own arm um, right where I had just removed my CGM and I must have Mm -hmm. poked like the absolute worst spot. Um, I just, I felt silly. I felt like such a rookie. I'm like looking at a couple marks on my legs and my arms. And I literally had to pull up like a guide that my endocrine had sent me years ago of like, here are your injection safe sites. Because I had to remind myself, like there are so many other areas of my legs and on my belly. Like I don't need to keep hitting the same spots. Um, and it's just so much worse in the winter. And every year I forget, like it's, it's the same thing, Christy. I mean, okay, here's the thing though. First off, I would consult a dermatologist because the welts could be an autoimmune situation. Let's hope not. But 
as someone who works at a health magazine and is constantly covering all the worst case scenario things, my mind always goes to like consult a professional. But um, so if you're having random welts to those listening, Christy knows her body and she's going to do what's best for her as she should. But um, our medical advice is never to, um, we're not giving medical advice is the point of my, my sentence here. Um, but yeah, I mean, especially for those doing multiple daily injections, and I've noticed myself when I've had to do MDI over the years, like randomly if my pump fails, um, I've just noticed that I have very reactive skin. And it sounds like you do as well, Christy, but when you're kind of giving injections in addition to dealing with adhesives uh, on various things, whether that be your insulin pump or your continuous glucose monitor, your CGM, there are reactions to be had. Like I get hives sometimes from my omnipod where like if, if it's on my arm and I have particularly dry skin I'll notice like I'll have some welts from exact in the outline of my pod um it's not super common for me and it really does tend to skew towards the colder months when I'm not moisturizing my arms as much as I should be um I feel like that line from date night with Tina Fey and Steve Carell that movie way back when where she's like I have to go home and wash my arms um, <laughs> anyways that's like my go-to for those who know you know what I'm talking about but um it is wild how seasonally things can change because in the summer I'm more worried about my pump sweating off and in the fall and winter I'm more worried about my skin being too dry and my pump actually falling off because of like gross dead skin that's coming off and what's my pump stinking do um that is gross, but true. So what, what are your tips specifically for MDI, Christy? Because you've, you've been doing MDI for 12, 10 years. It'll be 10 years soon. It was 10 years last summer. So I'm in year 11. Um, this is going to sound really, really basic, but moisturize. <laughs> I all summer, all summer long, I, other than sunscreen, I don't really moisturize my skin. I'll put on like some face cream if I'm taking makeup off or something over the summer. But when I'm sweating, like I don't really feel the need to add to it with lotion. But as it gets cooler, I have to, have to, have to remember when I step out of the shower, especially because I like scalding hot showers and just burning my skin off. Me too. I know dermatologists <laughs> should me for that another day. Like, yeah. But like we have our vices. Okay. Like sometimes we just need that hot shower to wash off the day. It's just, it's just soothing. It's just it soothing. But when I step out of the shower, I have to rub some cream into like the backs of my arms, my thighs. I have to get those areas moisturized because I noticed immediately when I started doing that in the last week, um, I stopped forming the new, I'm calling them welts. I sound very dramatic. Um, they're bumps on my skin, but all the same. Uh, they are not forming nearly as large, nearly as badly. Um, it just helps the needle kind of slide in that much easier. Trigger it's warning. Uh, <laughs> it, it, for it, those that are sensitive to needle talk, this probably isn't the best episode Probably for you. isn't the podcast for you. Yeah. Um, it just, it supports your skin. It just helps that whole process quite literally go a little bit smoother. Um, I'm also not shy um, about asking Zach to help me out, um, especially with my arms because he has a better view of where any existing bumps are. Um, right. Like I said, when I take my CGM off, usually you can still see the little outline and I am just positive for the one really bad bump that was on my arm. I know that I hit an area with a needle when I went to give myself an injection before a meal. I know that I hit where I had just had my CGM. Like I had changed it earlier that day. Are um, you on the G6, Dexcom G6? Yeah. Okay. I'm on the G7 and I've noticed that since it is such a smaller footprint, I've had like less of a reaction. Uh, but I will say, and this is a, another trigger warning for those that are sensitive to blood, you're going to want to um, fast forward a couple, maybe like two minutes here. But the other day I am sitting on the couch having just changed my Dexcom and um, to my G7 and I to a new G7, I should say. And I inserted it and I was like, hmm, that hurt. And even Matt said something like, oh, that sounded like it didn't go in great. Um, and I was like, hmm, yeah, it's okay. But like these things, I don't want to waste it. So I'm going to keep it on. And the pain went away. It wasn't like consistent. So it warms up. A couple of hours go by. Everything's fine. And all of a sudden I'm sitting on the couch in a deep discussion with Matt about 
the world. And I feel something dripping um, down my arm and down my side. And I look and I couldn't really see it because of the position of where it was on the back of my arm. So I just saw this giant blood stain on the couch from where I was sitting from my arm. This has happened to me twice. It was literally leaking out of the hole. Like it was like Loki spurting some blood. And I was like, I'm going to pass out. This is disgusting. And we deal with blood constantly, right? Because that's, you know, the chronic illness we have. We do some type of finger prick or what have you, injection, you know, hopefully these things won't require a lot of blood and they shouldn't. But um, yeah, it ended up being like disgusting and it was like squirting blood out of my arm but it was so weird because it was like hours after I had inserted it I must have just moved my arm a certain way but as soon as I took it off it stopped so I'm thinking I hit a vein um but yeah I had to like my hot tip for getting blood stains out of anything is to use and I learned this from a doctor the other day and by the other day I mean a couple years ago when they had a nurse who had never done this before or they had a medical assistant try and take my blood for a blood test and she did not do right. And it was like a scene from Carrie. It was disgusting. Um, Anyways, they got blood all over my dress and they were like, oh, just put some hydrogen peroxide on it and it'll lift it right out, which is what they did. And it was insane. So for the couch that I got blood all over, I poured some hydrogen peroxide on just the spot and it um, on the armrest and it lifts it to the surface, it bubbles up, and then you just dab it and you keep doing that until it comes out. And so that is the too. hottest tip ever. Yeah, hot tip. I'm so if sorry that happened this, to you, but I mean, this, is a, this is an amazing takeaway for me because I right, I was constantly literally, literally saved so many things because blood stains, right? Like, and if you have an incident like I did where you ex where you're like you have a lot of it coming out of you and all over the place, and a very nice couch that you don't want to be permanently blood stained. Um, it's a, it's a great tip. So I learned that from a doctor and it, you know, it really did change, change the game for me. Um, now for pump users, I mean, obviously there are a lot of, you know, different tips in terms of like skincare. We're not dermatologists, so I'm not going to be like, this is what I, I mean, I could, we could actually, and probably should say what our favorite ones are, but I wanted to shift for a second and talk about static electricity in the colder months with CGMs and pumps. Um, it can really mess with, um, Christy, she's like, please stop getting in my face. I am trying to play quietly. <laughs> Christy's like, Maggie's like, mom, leave me alone. She's too cute. She's too as cute. More. <laughs> I just want to squeeze her face so hard. Um, but like not in like an of mice and men way, sorry. Anyways, so for pump users, I've noticed that sometimes I will get random Omnipod failures. This hasn't happened recently, knock on wood, but um, during the winter months, especially when I was on the old Eros pods, and I really think it was from static electricity. It, all, it only happened like three or four times, but it was when I was wearing like really, really thick staticky sweaters and I had like a million layers on and all of a sudden I would get a random pump failure and then I'd go to move like take off the pump and it would shock me. Like, you know, you were rubbing, not rubbing, yikes. Like if you were wearing socks and go to touch a metal door handle, like that kind of shock. Um, Now that's anecdotal evidence. I'm not saying that this is legit, but something that I found similarly, if you have like really staticky hair is if you rub a dryer sheet on it, that can help. Um, But also I think really just having that knowledge that maybe your pod's failing for another reason and being sure to take down the error code and when you call for a replacement pump or pod part, or I should say pump part or pod. Um, And yeah, I mean, that's like a separate thing that is bizarre and really only happens to me in the colder weather, heavy winter coat and like scarf and chunky sweater months. But um Christy, have you noticed anything particular? Because this, uh, this is would this be your first or second winter with uh, with your Dexcom CGM? Second for sure. I definitely had it. Oh, when you were pregnant, low key yeah. heading into my third year. Yeah, with it, it it feels recent still. But I'm like, I had it for a year before, at least a full year before Maggie, and she's eight months now. Um, I have never noticed anything like that with my Dexcom in relation to static. I'm questioning now. 
when I've had <laughs> it's never happened to me on my Dexcom. It's only happened for my insulin pump. Yeah, no, I can't say I've noticed anything with the Dexcom. I really think it's like different because I th- think the Dexcom has some metal in it. I don't I mean, I'm sure my Omnipod does as well. I don't know if this is all made up in my head, but it feels valid. And I saw it on Facebook. So if it's on Facebook, it has to be true, right? Um, But I am curious, have you noticed that your sites are itchier for your Dexcom in the winter, in the colder months? Because I have. (laughs) I think it's just the dry skin. skin. My skin in general is a little bit itchier in the winter. And again, the moisturizing is really the only tip that I have for that in particular. Um, but itchiness around, I don't think so. I don't think so. I, well, now that you're like a wit cognizant of it, I'd be interested to see if this, if yeah, you notice anything I'm... this, this season, but for me, cause you can't really just like slap on some moisturizer and then like put on the pump right away or put on your CGM right away. Your skin obviously has to dry or else nothing's going to stick to it. And also for me, when my skin gets incredibly dry, I literally just love to throw on some Vaseline if it's like near, if it's on an old pump site, that's kind of something that has been really helpful for me or Aquaphor. Um, Although I recently found out from my dermatologist that Aquaphor, you can have a reaction to because there's like another element in it. And I always as opposed to vas- just like straight up Vaseline or petroleum so funny jelly. Ever, I literally made a dermatologist appointment for tomorrow this morning. Really? Okay, good. I just, I am irritated enough by this and I know when I'm varying it up, we're like jumping around a little bit here. I try to save my, <laughs> sounds funny to say belly shots. I try to save my belly for MDI shots yeah. for like eating out and when I'm out being social. But if I'm home, I have to, I'll, I mean, the baby doesn't really care for now. I just drop my pants in the kitchen. I have Zach help me with my arm injections. Like I do anywhere other than my belly when I'm home. Yeah, because you then when, I, when I'm out, I can save my belly for the MDI shots. The access. It's, it's really just the repetition where I start to notice issues. If I'm hitting the same areas or, oh, it's the worst. If you hit an area that's like, and this is much more for, um, this is much more for um, MDI than the Dexcom. Um, But just because you're doing multiple daily injections, um, keeping track of where you were, where you gave yourself your last shot and trying not to hit too muscular of an area, which again is why it's so helpful when Zach can do my arms for me because he can really get like the true back of the arm. But I've noticed that too with the bumps on my legs. If I do it on the top of my thighs, your skin is perfect. I don't know what you're whining about. Um, I'm just making crazy faces, so I'm totally like when distracting. I do, when I do the tops of my thighs, because um, that is an area, like that whole top part of your thigh um, is fair game, but it like that's where I notice the biggest bumps with um, if I hit the same area and it's on the top where like there's more muscle, it's just the bloody worst. Have you – so where do you usually inject if you're I, out and about if in, I can in do winter? The, in the summer, the sides of my thighs are the easiest thing because it's under the table. It's just like a little bit more discreet, a little bit more comfortable. Plus, there's just more meat there <laughs> to say, <laughs> like, frankly, there's just more to work with. Um, you can really get like the full sides. I mean, I wouldn't go too close to your knee or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but if I if I can mix it up back there, I have never had a problem with like the sides of my legs and like those bits of my thighs with the bumps it really is on the tops of my legs but again i don't want to hit the same area and like but so in the like colder months when you're bundled up and wearing like a ton of layers are you you mentioned your stomach before when i'm Um, out and about being social it's pretty much always my stomach and especially around the holidays when i'm being very social i it's why i have to have to have to and especially with the baby i'm like always trying to save time and it's quicker to do my belly or my arm um because she's eating like actual food now. So I try to always eat with her. We do hashtag girl lunch every day. Um, But I have to have to have to set the time aside to vary your spots, drop my pants, hit my legs. I have to, because otherwise by the time that I get to the very social periods in December and as we get towards the new year, I mean, forget about it. I can't have my belly beat up by then 
Um, and honestly, because I was so, I mean, I never did, I never had my Dexcom on my belly while, while I was pregnant and I never had, I never did daily injections. There was a period of time when it was still perfectly safe. I just was so uncomfortable knowing that there was a baby in there. So I exclusively saved my arms for injections or no, I'm sorry. I exclusively saved my arms for Dexcom and I just shifted. I kept such close track of where my Dexcom was on my arms. And I only, only, only did my shots in my thighs. So for the past eight months for the ability to like actually be able to mix it up between those three areas, I feel like I started doing my belly a lot. Cause I was like, awesome. This is like untapped skin that hasn't been right. touched for nine months. Right. Um, but I want to keep it that way. Right. I think that, okay, so for those who are listening who are pancreatically capable or maybe just like are not on insulin in any form, um, just a little bit of food for thought. We have to vary our sites, whether that be, um, and by sites, I mean the area in which we are penetrating the skin, whether that's for our CGM, our insulin pump, or our multiple daily injections. And we have to do that to avoid the buildup of scar tissue. And scar tissue can be particularly problematic because it uh, can affect the absorption of your insulin. If you have an insulin pump, it can affect even how much of your shot or whatever is actually going into the skin. Um, there's just a lot there. And it also is kind of damaging to the skin and can be uh, an issue for you down the line um, in, in many ways. I'm not a dermatologist, obviously. There's a lot more that goes into that. But uh, if you have an endocrinologist and you are on supplemental insulin in any way that is not like oral or inhaled, you will end up having some kind of like check from your doctor on those sites, at least earlier on in your diagnosis, because they want to make sure that you're rotating. Um, now if you hit a muscle, like Christy was talking about, there's so much that goes into that beyond just pain there. It's back to that absorption. And by absorption, I mean the way in which your body is actually taking in the supplemental insulin that you're giving it. And we have so many variables when it comes to blood sugars that you don't want absorption of insulin to be one of them, right? Like you want to give yourself your shot and know that, okay, this is what I do and every time, every routine, like I'm giving it to myself 10 minutes before, 20 minutes before I eat. Um, it's, you know, in a spot that I know it usually works and let's go from there. So if you're high or low, you'll then, that's one less element uh, to, to factor into figuring out why, as opposed to like, you know, maybe your insulin to carb ratio is off or maybe you under or over, calculated the amount of carbohydrates in your meal or under or over calculated the amount of protein or fat, whatever, all these things end up affecting the way our body metabolizes food and the insulin. And, you know, as we also all know, it's not just food that affects blood sugar. So if you're stressed or if it's your time of the month, AKA your period, um, or if you're sick, you know, these are all things that can contribute to insulin resistance. So one more thing on your checklist, if you're high or low is figuring out, you know, what else is going on in your body. And we want to mitigate any additional problems that, that can arise, which, you know, that being scar tissue. So, um, rotating your sites is super important. And for that reason, but also, there's only so many places that you can inject or place an insulin pump or a continuous glucose monitor. Um, there is a very limited, in my opinion, window, according to the FDA, of what is FDA approved for, you know, Dexcom, Omnipod, t -cell, like whatever, you know, area you're looking at for a pump or CGM. Um but just because it's something's not FDA approved doesn't mean that you can't necessarily use it. It just means that that's not something that the FDA checked off as, as being like safe and good necessarily. Like I'm using these terms really loosely. I only recently learned a bunch about this through my job at prevention, uh, covering some stuff having to do with um, Ozempic and things like that, which is very interesting. That's, that could be a whole other episode. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that figuring out what is working and what isn't working in terms of sites, and that, that includes injections as well, can make a huge difference in your overall care and management of your blood sugar. So in the winter months, if you're having limited space to like whip out your know, like limited, if your skin's super dry and your pump's falling off, or if you have these welts and it's painful and, or if your legs are covered, you know, and you only are giving yourself injections and the stomach or arms when you take your sweater off or whatever, um, it, it can be 
it, it can contribute to a lot of scar tissue buildup, which can affect absorption and have, you know, affect you for years. Scar tissue buildup happens due to a significant amount of time of giving yourself injections or placing an insulin pump or CGM in the same spot. So a lot of times you won't realize it's happening until it's happened. Um, and then it's kind of like you got to give that area a rest at least for a X amount of months or maybe just all together. And the longer you have diabetes, the longer, you know, the more of an issue this can become because you're running out of space. So I, I love seeing people get creative with things where they're placing their pumps or doing their injections on Instagram. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I see people place it in areas that I'm like, this, the idea of this makes me want to pass out. Like, I think I, maybe I'm just really weak or a wimp, like whatever, this is real. This is me. But I've seen people have them on their caps and to me like I that is so muscular for me I was gonna say if you know if you've ever seen a photo of me you know I you can just look at me and know I don't lift a lot of weights um oh God, I don't have I don't have particularly don't muscular my calves. Um, you don't have to lift weights to have muscular I know, but that's calves. what I'm saying like that's what I'm trying to say is like I am not an avid weightlifter or marathon runner I take my baby on walks in the morning and that's kind of the best I can do at the moment. Um, but we do hit it every morning, but case in point, um, my calves, like, I don't feel like there's enough just loose skin yeah. and meat there to work with. So I would have to really ask my endocrinologist about their thoughts on that. But, um, in terms of the shots, if you think the term belly shots is funny, you can also do butt shots. <laughs> that's great. I've I, for, I completely too. forgot about that until like literally just now. But yeah, I think use, it's a good the, way you're low key scared, reminding me I need to mix it up even more than I think I am. Well, I Maggie's need to telling us I need to be seeing those butt shots. Maggie, this affects you literally not at all. Maggie's trying to be like, guys, okay, you've had your 25 minutes. This is enough. I respect it. The girl knows her worth. Um, okay, final thoughts. Um, this is actually one final tidbit that I find hilarious that I just wanted to share because it's Matt's favorite thing about, about diabetes that he loves to remind me. Um, so I think I touched on this a couple months ago, but I have stopped putting my insulin pump on my thighs because I noticed my absorption was terrible there. And like, it was like, insulin was like water, like nothing was happening. And so when it was time for my um, biannual endocrinology appointment, they always like check area exposed areas, like, you know, where I'm using my pumps. And so she was, I brought this up to her and she was like, okay, drop your pants. Let's see like what's going on with your legs. Maybe you have scar tissue. I didn't have scar tissue. She told me that I was too muscular in my legs for proper absorption. And Matt is like, you Bless. are so swole. I was like, no one has ever told me this before. Anyone who looks at me would not be like, damn, this girl is like dropping, dropping some some major like weights I don't know it, I wish I had hilarious. this problem so that I find it to be the funniest thing ever um I have completely stopped using my thighs for the past like six months um but I use my arms and stomach now and we're ro rotating constantly um but yeah so I'll leave you guys on that tidbit because it's hilarious and honestly like I never thought that was me and I still don't think it's me maybe Maybe my doctor is just, you know, leaning into flattery, but if that's the case, I love you when I needed that. Um, okay, wrapping up here because of so many things, Maggie, I feel like we should drop a picture of Maggie if you're comfortable with that because she's so damn cute. Absolutely. Um, I love our little Spain Cruise pal. Hi, Max. Hi. We're very like 70s today in her little... I'm here for it. Okay. So follow us on Instagram at pancreas underscore pals on Facebook at pancreas pals PP slide into our DMS on both. We love to hear from you. Clearly I'm running out of ideas about episodes. So please hit me up with maybe there's a topic you want us to cover again. If there's a topic you want me and Miriam to discuss, if you want one specifically with Christy, if you want us to get some other people on the pod, that's also a work in progress and we're, we're leaning into it. Email us at pancreaspals123 at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you guys and, you know, just excited for, I think this will be the kickoff to season 11 question mark, unclear. Um, but either way, we're so excited. Yeah, definitely any um, subject ideas. I feel like I'm just so in my mom era and I don't want to make it. No, the problem is you and Miriam are in your mom era and that's not a problem, except I have nothing to contribute to that. <laughs> so. 
<laughs> I am not in my mom era. I love hearing about it and learning. And I, I know our listeners do too, but I'm trying to diversify a little bit because we do have a lot of listeners. Um, and yeah. All right. Okay. Have a great time, everyone. Bye.